What up, everybody? It's Chris Roscoe. This is Operation Mock Show, and today we are talking about addiction to technology, right? Because I think to a certain degree, all of us suffer from this. I know I've got a few technological things that I could fairly easily get addicted to. I love Instagram because I love memes and I love pretty girls, and my friends are on there, and Facebook I love to a lesser extent because it makes me angry all the time, but apparently I'm addicted to that as well. And I love video games, and I read comic books on my phone, and so it's like, yeah, technology has a lot of shit that I really, really like on it. And at the same time, as we all understand, it is a giant fucking trap that we can spend a lot of time on. We can spend so much time on technology, and it's like not that that's inherently a problem, But what is inherently a problem is spending a lot of our time doing something while our mind is trying desperately to remind us that we'd rather be doing something else. That occurs to me as a problem. Like I will probably play video games and read comic books and watch anime and look at memes and make memes for the rest of my life. And I will probably go on message boards where I can talk about anime and comic books and shit like that for the rest of my life. But when you do it or when I do it in a way or at a time or for an extended period of time, when my mind is saying like, dude, you have meaningful stuff you could be doing. You could be be being creative. You could be connecting with actual human beings. You could go out and be meeting real girls. And it's like there's all these things you could be doing. That is a sad fucking state of affairs. And so what I want to dive into today is why the fuck would we do that? Why would any rational human being, which if you're watching this, I'm assuming you are because you at least know how to get here and had an interest in, in learning about why these things are the, the way they are. So if you, you at least have the rationality to look into why you might be doing this thing, why would somebody as smart as you do these things? That's what I want to look into today. And I'm going to do that by exploring Freud's idea of the will to life and the will to death. First of all, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the will to life because the will to life is inherent in anything that's worth doing. It's the thing that gets us out of our comfort zone. It's the thing that allows us to face the unknown. It's the thing that allows us to be uncomfortable in the pursuit of something meaningful and inspiring to us, right? And it's inherent in anything. If you're going to do anything worth doing, you can't get away with it or from it. If you're going to get into any kind of relationship, a business relationship, a sexual relationship, a romantic relationship, a platonic relationship, anything, at some point, you're going to have to say some shit that you'd really rather not say. And likely, you're going to have to say some shit that could potentially jeopardize the stability of the relationship. And you have to face the fact that you saying the thing could either destroy the relationship or strengthen it and deepen it tremendously. That's an inherent part of having relationships. And if you want a new skill, if you want to develop any sense of creativity, first of all, you have to develop the skill. You have to learn the thing because by definition, if you want to learn it, it means you don't already know it. Therefore, you have to step into the unknown in order to do it. And you probably have to be not that great at it when you first start. So you have to face the discomfort of being bad at a thing. And if you're going to talk to people, you have to face the rejection or the potentiality of being rejected. And that's just life like some of the things we have to do or all the things that make life worth living have some element of it that makes us face our fears and grow and stretch and face the unknown a little bit more so the answer to that or the thing that balances it out is the will to death it's the part of us that wants to run and hide from all that stuff which is not by any means inherently bad i'm not here to tell you that sleeping in on sundays or you know taking longer hot showers or uh, scroll, just scrolling on the internet or playing video games or any of that shit is bad. Like, you know, sometimes I, so playing Overwatch is my favorite game right now. And sometimes when I'm feeling uninspired or can't get myself motivated, I'll go play a quick two out of three match in Overwatch and suddenly I'm hyped again because I got competitive and I had to get focused and I had to get fierce and I wanted to win. And that actually helps energize me. And comic books and anime are so inspiring to me. If I'm feeling depressed, there are certain anime shows that I can watch that'll get me like, that'll remind me of who the fuck I am and what a hero is and what I care about. And so these things have tremendous value or else I wouldn't do them. But the only thing is when we get addicted to them and when we get addicted to the false version of the will to life that these things give us. Because when you scroll through your phone, especially if you like memes and pretty girls like I do, you're just going to get a constant influx of dopamine and serotonin and sometimes oxytocin, depending on if people co- like comment certain things or whatever. 
and that's cool and all to a certain degree but at the same time it is a it's a it's a cheap fake of the real thing right like when you comment on somebody's whatever and they comment back that's not the same as actually being face to face with the human being and actually connecting it's close enough close enough but it's not the same and when you play a video game that has you go out and be adventurous and brave and strong and do all these things it's not the same as actually facing your fears it's not the same as actually traveling it's not the same as actually being adventurous but it kind of fools your mind on a chemical level into thinking you are and then you get addicted to them to the point where you'll still focus on the dopamine and serotonin rushes like a fucking addict and in the background you'll have this low level hum in your head being like hey bro i think you should probably be doing other stuff because you know life is bigger than this and if you're probably going to like regret it if you just keep doing this shit forever and ever and ever you're going to miss out on everything life has to offer and that's just going to be happening in the back of your head while you sit here pretending that everything's cool and it's just this very bizarre thing that we do. And so another, so why do we do this? I think a huge reason is, first of all, we're not aware of the, the will to life and the will to death. And we're not aware that we're being essentially addicted to the will to death. I don't think we've made it that viscerally real. And I don't think we've made it that negative of a thing. It seems like something we can just get away with doing. And we think we can just get away with doing it because we're not, in, we're not aware of the cost that's associated and so I think one of the biggest things that if you're someone who's addicted to technology and you'd really rather not, I'm going to give you some concrete things you can do to, to help that a friend of mine taught me. But at the same time, the number one thing I want to take a look at is do you know what your alternatives are, right? Because I was noticing this the other day. I've been really trying to break myself out of uh, – my addiction to technology. I'm trying to look at my phone less, um, trying to play video games less. And one thing I noticed that it's not about doing these things less, it's about doing other things more. And so it's not about like, do I pick up my, you know, controller and play Overwatch for a few hours? It's or not. Instead of that, it's more like, do I pick up my controller and play Overwatch? Or do I work on something meaningful, inspiring and exciting to me that also happens to be a little scary? And I think a lot of us don't actually identify what that would be for us. And so it's a question of, do I do this thing that is at least bringing me a little bit of joy? Or do I put it down and face the existential terror of not actually knowing what the fuck I want to do with my life? When you're put up against that kind of situation, and when those are your options, it becomes pretty quick to choose this, or it becomes pretty easy to pick the serotonin and the dopamine over the existential terror in, of not knowing what the fuck to do. So the thing to do first is to identify what you'd rather be doing. And this serves two purposes. One, first of all, it inspires you so that when you think about putting your shit down, you're like, oh, I could do that inspiring, exciting thing that's also a little scary, which is tremendously helpful because you start to orient yourself about where you want to go rather than what you'd rather not be because focusing on what you'd rather not be is just going to keep you stuck in that mentality. But if you can focus on what you actually want to become, it'll start to build momentum in that direction. And that's extremely important because you're going to build momentum in whatever direction your attention's focused. So build your momentum in the direction you actually want to go in. So define the direction you actually want to go in. Now, this will do a second thing as well. That low level hum of like psychological distress that happens in the back of your head when you like know you should be doing something else. <laughs> this is this is both bittersweet because it'll make that louder and more intense. And you want that louder and more intense. You want that psychological distress of like, dude, you're missing out on life. Like you're not being creative. You're not contributing to the world. You're not doing the work that matters to you. You're not out connecting with your friends. You're not out doing all these things that would fulfill you. Like you want that voice to be as loud as fucking possible. Because without it, you're on a one-way ticket to dying with regrets. So it may seem shitty and it may seem inconvenient. But if you have a voice in the back of your head that's telling you and screaming at you that you could be doing more and you know it's true, like thank God for that because that's what will get you to change. And if you clearly identify all the things that you want and if you clearly identify what will happen if you don't go for them over an extended period of time, as you, st as you spend an extended period of time, all that shit will come up and it'll be like, dude, not only are you missing out on stuff, but it's just costing you a lot and you, your life could potentially go to shit if you don't go do the things that you want. You want that voice loud as possible so that it'll actually motivate you to take some changes.
So to, to recap what we've done up until this, we've talked about the will to death and the will to life and how addiction to technology lives in the will to death and how these insidious motherfuckers have made their apps and their software and all this different stuff psychologically addicting. They want you to be addicted to it because they know that we would choose comfort and security over courage and victory and, and the unknown and all these different things. But you have to prove that you're not one of those people. You have to prove that you can't be manipulated and you have to prove that your life is worth living on your own fucking terms. And the way to do that is by identifying what that would even mean to you. Not what other people think you should do, not what you've been told to do, not anything like that, but what is genuinely inspiring to you. To where if you did turn away and look at your phone and play video games, you would be genuinely sad because there's more exciting and inspiring things that you could be doing. That is a great way to start doing these things. And granted, there's more you can do. I'm actually teaching a course on this at the end of the month that'll help you not only create this vision that we're talking about, but also integrate it into your value system so that you cannot turn away, so that you have to look at it and you have to live in alignment with who you really are. It becomes automated. It just becomes a part of who you are. And then we actually integrate all the emotions that might get in the way so that you don't even have to think about this stuff. Your honor and your value and integrity, they just line up inside of you automatically as a result of being true to yourself about these things. So if you want help doing this, let me know and I'll get on the phone with you for free and I'll help you map this all out. I don't get off the phone with people in these free conversations until they have a plan for what to do with their lives. We'll figure out where you want to go, what's stopping you from getting there, and then we'll create a plan to actually get you there, whether or not you sign up for my course. So fucking do it. It's worthwhile. I change people's lives in 20 minutes reliably. So just do it. It's worth it. Now, if you want some actual tips on things you can do to make your addiction to technology a little bit weaker, uh, things I would recommend doing is sleeping with your phone on airplane mode. I started putting my phone on airplane mode an hour before I go to bed. So my, air, my phone goes on airplane mode at 10 o'clock and I'm generally lights out by 11. So that gives me an hour to like stretch and smoke weed and meditate and, and journal and whatever I feel like doing to get myself ready for bed. And then when I wake up, I do my morning routines again knowing that I will never know if anybody sent me a message. If there's anything that's going to stress me out first thing in the morning, I won't know until I choose to. If somebody's upset at me, I won't know until I choose to. And that creates a really awesome level of peace. And another thing I recommend doing, if you're like me and you work from home and like there's just distractions everywhere, keep your phone in another fucking room. You know, like figure out what you got to do, mark out your time to do it, and throw your phone in another room so that it can't distract you or anything like that. But uh, I notice it's, it's harder for me to say no to video games than it is to my phone. And so it's really important to know what's worth choosing over that because video games are really fun to me. It's just like, it's challenge. It's, it's, you're connecting with other people. You're competing with other people. A lot of times they're really cool looking and they're also just fun. And so it's, there's a lot of adventure in it. It meets a lot of my values. And, and Tony Robbins said this thing where if something meets uh, three human needs, it becomes an addiction and technology and video games meet a lot of my needs. So it's like, just forget about it. So create your vision and do these little hacks and maybe you can, you know, have a little bit more freedom and you can be more in line with who you are and what you really want. And if this sounds like a lifestyle you want to embrace, then hit me up and I will get on the phone with you for free and map all this shit out for you. All right. I've talked for 14 minutes. I love you. Thank you so much for watching. It seriously means the world to me that you're here and watching all this stuff. And thanks for being a part of my life. I love you.